Hello, uh, welcome to my talk today. Uh, the importance of non-code contributions to code-centric open source projects. So my name is Marcel Kussmann. I'm employed at Bosch IO. So uh, Bosch IO, this is uh, the uh, spare head of the Internet of Things, Bosch. So we try to connect everything, primarily the things that we produce at Bosch. Within Bosch IO, I'm working in the open source services section, and there especially I care, I care about the open source office. And uh, also in this uh, case, I came to this topic. I will tell, uh, talk today. Uh, parallelly, I'm uh, also part of the open chain. I am uh, representing Bosch as uh, governing in the governing board, and uh, so I'm also have hard part of my heart in, uh, in the open chain, and you will see later also um, some advertisement for this uh, community. So um, from my com company, uh, we have an open source strategy based on our IoT platform that we're uh, heavily uh, promoting in the Eclipse IoT. And, and with this, uh, you potentially know these uh, presentations with uh, the maturities of open source involvement. So you start with usage, going via contribution, and then finally champion. And once you did this, then you can really drive your business with it, and that's what we try. And uh, therefore, from an open source office perspective, we had the pleasure to accompany this over the last years uh, within Bosch IO. And um, so what we thought then a few years ago, uh, if our developers if our business is doing it so we should also eat our own dog food so you can see my um, my talk uh, two years ago in the open source summit uh, when i talked about leveraging open source projects for open source management and today i want to present you now that we are some steps further uh, away now uh, and um, also with the open source management so there had happened some uh now in the last years and also from the processes that we use um here we have a specific uh, we developed a specific perspective so this is the highest level of our process landscape that we use for open source management so we see there um typically those four uh, process areas that uh, are in there and the talk today is primarily about open source usage and handling. So uh, I talk about non-code contributions and um, we in code-centric projects, uh, open source projects. And um, here, this is kind of obvious if we use them and we miss some parts in it, um, that is uh, primarily affected in the usage and handling, but there are also some implications in uh, the contribution and also in the, um, in the community management that we see in here. And uh, to start with here, um, I have some one ex some personal experience I had uh, when I uh, went to my workshop and uh, because I had inherited some tools uh, in the family and uh, they are made this picture here. Uh, and uh, I want to uh, yeah, point out some, some of those aspects in here. Um, that I would transfer later. So I saw this really beautiful tool that I have now, and uh, it's uh, very sophisticated. And yeah, but the problem I see here, for me at least, I have no clue how to use it. So I, uh, I inherited the tool, but there was no manual or something, or and I also couldn't ask someone how to use it, but well, it's looking nice and well, I tried my best, uh, but potentially I, I crashed it, I don't know. <laughs> and um, so, but I, at least I had to pass some time with this tool. And uh, then um, I also asked myself as the second aspect, so well, the craftsman who did this was obviously very gifted. It has nice smooth surfaces and it's very well done, uh, but, if I would get uh, the the manual from this craftsman, I don't know if if he would have written it well same in the same quality. Then he did this brilliant woodwork. And if you transfer this now to the software uh, here that we talk about today, 
uh, and open source software projects. Uh, I see some parallels in this and uh, also for transferring this. Uh, here, so typically we, we observe software developers that really have fun to code and also in the open source there, they have their heart in the open source in the community. Uh, and they're, yeah, they, they concentrate on the code. So therefore I also call this talk, yeah, importance of non-code non contributions to code-centric um, open source projects. On the other hand, I, I observe also um, that, well, they, they love also the features, new features, adding new features. So they potentially primarily implement functional requirements. On the other hand, if you look at non-code contents, what could that be? So for example, tests, documentation, installation guides for users, and most important from our point of view, it's as the open source office, also the licensing, licensing stuff, and also the third party dependencies and, and their, uh, their licenses. And um, if you step back and look at it, so you would say, okay, hmm, yeah, this is, uh, the upper part is the fun for the developer, but this part is potentially not so funny. It's rather boring. Uh, and yeah, on the other hand, these represent typically the non-functional requirements. So if you have good documentation, you have a nice user convenience. Uh, if you have all the installation guides, and that's what I meant earlier, then you have a community attractiveness, so you can really build your community out around it, and it, it they will welcome your tool and, and your software. And last not least, also the, the transparency about what's in there and also the licensing for compliance reasons. And uh, so now there's where this transfer doesn't really work is with the tool that you saw earlier, this is a one by one. So it's um, typically you go to the vendor, you get this tool, you buy it or whatever, and you get handed over. So we will not have the situation, the context, like we have here with software that's spread all over the world via open source. So in this case, if you have a really cool application or tool, it might be uh, heavily reused. And then if there are missing things in there, missing non-code contents, missing non-functional requirements, uh, then that could have a much higher impact. So now also going to this only code side, what we observe is how do you handle if you have a de defect, if you detect a defect. So the typical thing that we, um, that we observe is, okay, there's a defect, let's fix it. Uh, and there are two ways. On the one side, you have, uh, in, if you are in an organization, and I'm, I am in a, in a business organization um, who provides also contribution possibilities, but sometimes you don't have that. And uh, what would happen, you want to use open source component and you potentially found, find a bug or a missing feature. So what would you do? You would modify it so to fix the bug or add this new feature. Uh, if you have a very a uh, vital community. So they are producing um, next versions of the tool. And every time they produce a new version with new features and potentially also secured patches and so on, and you might be interested also to participate in these uh, new improvements, then you would have the need to merge your modifications with the bug or the missing feature every time they do it. So you always have a lot of effort uh, in uh, maintaining this internal patch branch. As an alternative, if you are able to contribute, if you, uh, your organization has that open source fitness that you can do this, so that's much easier because then you have your modification and you uh, contribute it back. And if the pull request is accepted, then you're fine then because the upstream project will care about your modification and um, you can just use it right away with your bug fix or potentially even the missing feature that you had. Um, that's what I call now fixing it at the root. And I guess most of you will also agree that it's also good citizenship if you find a bug that you fix it at the root. And either, even if you don't, uh, uh, you are not able to contribute it directly as a code, at least um, one would expect that uh, you give a hint in the issue tracker, things like that, so that the community may improve. Then the other question is, as a, as a uh, yeah, one point I already talked about years ago is about, yeah, when 
would I be rather reluctant in sharing something? So this is typically then when you have a high level of differentiation, because uh, if you're an organization with some business needs, then you would say, okay, I, we do not want to, uh, to harm our business. But here we talk about, well, rather the raw, raw material that, that we use, like here in this case where you have those uh, refined uh, goods there at the right side, uh, on the left side, you rather have the raw material. And this is what we transferred two years ago already on the open source management. And this is where we currently already have a, an active community here in open chain and the tooling group. Uh, so that's in the to-do group. And this is really nice, also nice to work together. Where we said, okay, yeah, uh, we all can only win if we share here, because also, first, this is no big differentiation that we have here, everyone profits. But now with this non-cult contributions, this is the question and you have to judge by yourself. Well, if I use this tooling for clearing the material and uh, fixing those non-functional bugs, is this then also already so much differentiating so that you won't share it or not. So this is what you have to share, uh, that you have to judge by yourself. And now to summarize those observations um, from what we do in the daily scans, uh, here we still observe a non-functional requirements not covered, namely the, the IP issues like unclear license situation, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the difference now between now and then was that now with the open change reference tooling that we're currently developing together in, in collaboration, it's the detection gets much better. So we see more and more. Uh, the other observation I see at the moment is that, yeah, we detect those now with the tooling, but potentially also fix it several times, more, multiple times in our internal patch branches, even company internally, if you know, don't know of each other, but also uh, company or organization wide um, and between different organization might be that there are different um, patch branches in every, um, in every organization. So instead of just fixing it only once at the root. So this is the one observation, something is missing potentially. The other observation also of about what is this? So care about licensing, care about this third party dependency. So this is potentially boring for the software developer. And there might be other professional groups in the software area that yeah, for them, it's potentially also easier to cover those tasks. Um, I know this from a former colleague who was a tester who said, yeah, I just have a different yeah, way to approach things because I, I want to test it until it, it smokes, kind of, whereas the developer is he's, he's a creator. He wants to create new features. And so the, there's the question of, is it fun? And then the other thing also, do you need special skills? So if you look at this, um, so who shall do it then, if not the developer? So there we have two options. The one option is, uh, well, it's still the developer, but we have to make it fun for the developer. So that, it's, or at least that's easier to perform tasks where we currently see gaps or miss non-code non uh, contributions. On the other hand, we can also raise the awareness among us, for example, the open source offices or other people in the company or in the organizations that are not the developers or coders, but have other functionalities and also make them aware, yay, you can also contribute there. We value your non-code non contributions and you're welcome as a non-code contributor. So if we wrap that up, so this is the one thing, so who should do it? But the other thing is we have those main trails. So you have material from the past, so we can't change that anymore. How should we do it? Uh, so here we see, okay, we have to overlay the metadata if there's missing something. Here, for example, we have the clearly defined project. Then for the present, that's what we try with the open source tooling, uh, reference tooling to automate as much as possible and also provide the tooling so that it's easy uh, to, to detect it and, and, and handy. And uh, so for the present project, but also if you use dependencies in your projects that uh, direct or transit, transitive dependencies that this you also detect in those past projects, if you want to say. 
And for the future, that's also what uh, some of the communities um, are targeting to is that also raising awareness by training and also provide much more tools and checklists uh, to mod automate it as much as possible. And there as um, the overview, so how to fix it. And here, as you can see, I'm focusing on open source management because you could talk about non-contributions, non-code contributions and testing or documentation, whatever, but let's stay on the open source management. So if you see those three main trails, past, present, future, and then you have the developer and then you have all the non-developers. So for the developers, as I said, for the past, um, they would be clearly defined. So with data that would overlay um, and they can also contribute. Developers are, well, they know how to do this. Then for the present, if you have a present project there, they could leverage our open source reference tooling. For example, the reporter and force compliance bundle is automatically generated. So that would already improve the results of the present project um, and uh, avoid that uh, new gaps come up. And for the future part, you, they can check and avoid also that they have gaps, at least from the IP side and, and also licensing issues. So you have the reuse software um, community that provides help a tool, reuse API that they can use to check um, their project. So this would be the developer part, also potentially non-coding stuff, but also non-developers could um, contribute here. So um, first of all, let's start here with this uh, reference tooling. Now we have analyzers and scanners that we can use even if we are not developers. This is what we're doing in our office. So we have a lot of colleagues um, that support the projects um, with a scanning and then also curating uh, the missing data. So they use this tooling and everyone can use it. That's um, also what, what we try to make it really uh, easy to use for everyone and automated. And once they find those gaps, uh, they can also contribute them to clearly find help uh, to grow this, this community and the set of data. And last not least, also open chain in the curriculum working group here. Um, so also contributions are welcome to, to raise awareness and also to make um, the whole level much better uh, for everyone. So that is also fun and um to everyone um to do this and last not least then also for the for the past we have this software heritage so here you can uh, at least donate <laughs> uh how, that you can do in, in all those open source projects but here i think um depending on on your skills then you also have the possibility to make that uh um yeah persisting uh, over the over the next years as a software heritage. Okay, so here, um, this is what I want to give you as a message. So you, we do not need to wait for developers to fix this. So we miss uh, non-code content in, uh, so, or potentially there, yeah, the license is not at the right place or it's hard to find, things like that. So here as, as, a, as a quote, talk is cheap, show me the code, uh, I would, uh, extend this and, and please show me all the rest as well. Yeah, so don't talk only, but yeah, you're you're welcome. So everyone is invited to join the communities and collaborate on that non-code portions. And you can tell it to everyone, to your testers, to technical writers, technical editors, and also to your IP staff. Um, so you're welcome. We, uh, yeah, we welcome your, your pull requests here. And uh, for my talk that will be later, just I added here um, for the handout later, you don't have to read it here, but uh, also some details about the projects I talked about. So the one was clearly defined where you can find all the, the details about where you can reach it um, and how can you contribute if they're CLA, how is the contribution process, everything. Uh, but about format, I talk in my second talk um and here later once the documents are spread then you're welcome to check this also the reference tooling the open chain and the review software okay so thank you very much for listening 
and yeah, your yours. Welcome your pull requests.